Hi everybody and welcome to this episode of TensorFlow Meets. On this episode, it's my privilege to have Chris Gottbrath from NVIDIA and XQ from right here in Google to talk about TensorRT. Now TensorRT, Chris, tell us all about it. TensorRT is our programmable inference accelerator. It's basically software that we created to allow people who are creating uh, neural networks and artificial intelligence to run those networks in uh, production or in devices with the full performance uh, that GPUs can offer. A lot of the software that's developed for artificial intelligence is, is designed for training, mm -hmm. and there's optimizations we can apply for inference mm -hmm. that can get even more performance uh, that aren't appropriate for, uh, for training. Um, again, we created uh, uh, TensorRT uh, to accomplish this sort of goal of uh, performance, uh, because that's what GPU, you, you come to GPUs uh, for, uh, and because we're going to be using it uh, in inference, uh, we also wanted to focus on robustness. So we created it as a shared library. It's a very compact, modularized thing that you can uh, build on top of, uh, mm -hmm. as is kind of what we've done with the uh, TensorFlow integration, uh, but it can also be used in uh, things like uh, uh, cars and, and other, other sort of devices. So it's not just good for like TensorRT and NVIDIA, right? It's also been great for TensorFlow for us to be able to work with you. Could you tell us all about it, XQ? TensorFlow is a machine learning system as we are improving our inference time performances. And we really want to give our users mm -hmm. uh, the best experience with TensorRT. Right. And uh, so we really want the user to, within their, without stepping outside the TensorFlow, within their inner development cycles, uh, be able to uh, enjoy the best benefit of the TensorRT and just have the automatically have the performance benefit without uh, much trouble. It's easy for them to try and it's uh, them to fine tune their models for better performance. Uh, so we come with this design that basically give the best of the both world to the developers so they can enjoy the full uh, diversity and mm -hmm. the flexibility of TensorFlow while still enjoy uh, the performance benefit of TensorRT. So we come with the design and the start up, um, the discussing uh, the start of collaboration with NVIDIA. It's, it's, actually, it's actually uh, really cool that you, that, you uh, uh, that idea because the original uh, sort of thought that we had for, for uh, TensorRT was to think of it as a post-processing step. And I think it's a cool idea uh, to really bring it into uh, the development environment. And um, as we've uh, talked to some of the early uh, folks who are, who are looking at this, they've really liked uh, that, that change. It's a very positive change for users. Sure. So how did this all get started? Um, well, I mean, users um, have been coming to us uh, who are starting with TensorFlow um, uh, you know, really from, from the very beginning with, with TensorRT. So we knew that, that it was an important uh, community to engage with. And NVIDIA and, and Google had, had been working uh, together for a long time for uh, GPU optimization on, mm -hmm. on TensorFlow. So there was already an, an existing working relationship. Um, and I think, uh, actually, you just you suggested uh, early on uh, with a, an architecture, a uh, quick little white paper of, hey, it wouldn't be cool if. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, we noodled on it, and we thought it actually sounded like a really good idea and, and got engaged. Do you still have that white paper? Um, have you framed it somewhere? Well, I don't know if it's that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's on disk somewhere. It's in Google Drive, I think, actually. Ah, OK. So it's, it's, it's kept securely. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so I'm a developer, and I want to start using this. I want to take advantage of this. What do I do? How do I get started? So well, you start in, in TensorFlow itself. So mm -hmm. you, you've created a, a graph in uh, TensorFlow. And then uh, with the uh, capabilities that have been added uh, through this integration, uh, so I think you have to start with TensorFlow 1.7. Yes, correct. Uh, okay. And uh, you, you'll have your graph. You'll, you'll be uh, tuning it, uh, as, as XQ said. Uh, you'll get to the point where you're like, OK, now, now what's my, my performance like on a V100? So you'll, you'll, you'll go on a machine that has a V100, and you'll uh, save the graph, which I think means freezing. That's the, freezing the, the, is the what we TensorFlow it, yeah. idiom for, for, yep. for saving it. Uh, so you're still in TensorFlow, but now you have the, the graph set up to do inference. Uh, then there's a command that was added that uh, will allow you to uh, do a graph transform. OK. And the graph transform will uh, take, the, take the network, and as XQ said, it'll find the places, the subgraph of the whole graph that uh, TensorRT can handle. And it'll actually convert that into, I think, a single uh, kind of TensorRT op. Uh, so you can still look at it with, um, with TensorBoard or something like that, and you'll just see the, you know, the, the, the data input. It'll go into the TensorRT op, and then you'll get whatever post-processing you, you, you might do. Uh, and uh, the cool thing is that's a graph. Right. So you're still in TensorFlow, <laughs> and all the things you can normally do with graphs you can do. In particular, you can, you can run inference on it right there, okay. or you can save it and then run it you know, in TensorFlow serving or something like that later on. 
Cool. Um, we're only really getting started, right? Yes. Um, so this is a nice approach uh, about this. This is uh, the first step toward the grand vision and the design that we, we have in mind, right? In the current form, it is very interesting that uh, you can still, the user, everything happens within TensorFlow. Mm -hmm. And the users can use a full flexibility and the generality of the ops that offered by TensorFlow in whatever way they want. They can still build the, the graph uh, to the heart's intent and still uh, for the subgraph mm -hmm. that the TensorRD can support, they will give them the performance benefit. They would just have this, uh, they, then they're, they're basically that. Then in the kernel form, you still need to do a graph transformation. And in the next few, uh, in the future, well, our teams are going to work very close together. So you don't even have to create a new graph. You just create your graph and then mention that I want to enable TensorRT now. And it will just magically uh, get a performance improvement from the, from the TensorRT. Still enjoy uh, the natural uh, development experience with TensorFlow. And that was one of the things, actually, isn't it? In NVIDIA, your processes, you run on multiple environments, right? There's automotive, and there's embedded, and there's cloud, and, and this yeah. will just work across all of them? Yeah, yeah, and, and this also uh, simplifies the, uh, yes, it does, uh, and it st streamlines the, the data flow. So one of the things that previous to this work, uh, we had uh, customers, and we would work and help them through, through this challenge is that it um, is taking the, the data, um, they could export uh, the, the TensorFlow graph into TensorRT, but in, in TensorFlow, they were probably doing some pre-processing and probably mm, using, mm. doing some post-processing using the tools that right. the TensorFlow environment brings to them. Um, they would have to kind of replace that with, with, with yeah. C code. And, uh, and if, they can, uh, you know, if they can take advantage of, of the integration, then they can just use the existing code they've already written in TensorFlow. So, so reducing um, a lot of friction, but yeah. being able to access all this And then being power. able to, yeah, again, again to uh, apply uh, the graph, or the artificial intelligence you know, model that they've created, they can put it in a drone or they can put it in a, in a right. car or in the cloud. Cool, cool. So if, again, as a developer, there's a, there's a site on NVIDIA, right, for developers yep, that yep. I can go so, to? Yeah, we'll, we'll have the URL in the, so that in I, don't the have, I don't have to say there, yeah. HTTP slash slash slash, <laughs> you know, whatever. HTTPS, uh, surely. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 it's probably a secure site. Um, so yeah, it's basically our developer site has a TensorRT page. Okay, so. cool. So we'll put the link in the description below. So yep. if you're a developer, go visit that link and you can learn about, all about TensorRT and work through some scenarios. Yeah, you'll be, you'll be able to, add, but, you can you can get information there, and it's also um, just available in TensorFlow. I mean, so yep. so when you get TensorFlow 1.7, uh, yes. it'll right. be there. Okay, so. I'm on that site every couple of weeks, downloading my CUDA drivers anyway. So I'll check it out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Chris, and thank you so much, XQ. Thanks everybody for watching this episode of TensorFlow Meets. If you've got any questions for me or any questions for my guests, just please leave them in the comments below, and we hope to see you in a future episode. Thank you.